Welcome on Pranavera Institute Forum and we are going to study about plant maintenance, shutdown, turnaround, outage, planning and scheduling on Pranavera 6. So here we have lecture number one and um, what we are going to study in this lecture is about uh, course introduction, what is shutdown and why we need it, basic concepts and how to develop file in Primavera 6 along with basic settings on Primavera 6. So let's start with course introduction. This is a dashboard of Primavera 6 with multiple screens and um, my name is Vakas Ahmed and I have 10 years of experience in oil and gas sector while serving uh, oil and gas sector in GCC in Adnok uh, Abu Dhabi and uh, Aramco in Saudi Arabia and uh, right now I'm project and business consultant and uh, I advise different organization to build their project management teams along with the defi de uh, defining project life cycle for their product oriented and project oriented knowledge and then synchronization of process to get target so and uh, primavera six uh, kind of things as well so how you guys can learn this course in live online mode so here you can see that uh, we will conduct a regular live online classes you have to submit your daily work whatever i will uh, deliver you the content you have to work on primavera 6 you have to maintain your notes and you have to share your uh, work via whatsapp with me and then you have to discuss your queries with me and you will get answers about your queries okay then uh, when you will get all the course done then you have to pass one exam and then you will be certified and even after this course you can come back to me and revise any lecture or get any kind of feedback regarding this professional course and uh, why primavera institute uh, should be chosen for this course real project based study in this course i will go through real project data uh, before uh, going into the paid course you can join me live online with free demo class and after free demo class you can join full premium course after course anytime you can come back to me as i discussed at this point earlier and additionally you can get your cv or interview preparations job hunt techniques uh, i i use to deliver this content on my facebook and youtube channel as well you guys can join primavera institute on youtube facebook and then career development techniques and uh, personal development as well and along with this course you will get at the end of course planning engineer interview preparation module okay so who can attend this specific course so all plant maintenance planners schedulers engineers and manager can attend this course for having effective scheduling on primavera 6 to understand in better way so first you should understand this thing that being a planning engineer what are the job responsibilities or what are the jds i mean job description areas you need to perform while doing your work in planning engineer capacity in the industry so you can just I, um, idealize this uh, slide that uh, a planning engineer has to record work sequence, what you have to go for maintenance, then the time required to do those maintenance or shutdown and cost estimation, then resource planning, then coordination with your site manager or shutdown manager, then you look ahead plans you have to do because I am discussing this thing that in every job advertisement, you will be given such kind of job descriptions. So that will give you more effective idea that what you are going to learn. So monitoring and update progress and reporting and presentation, all these things a planning engineer is doing uh, with a little bit variation. And uh, then this is actually a visionary role. What you are going to start is ending up with a visionary role. So why I am calling it visionary? Because it have three P's. 
what these three P's because we are just going to start our uh, basic concepts so to understand it in better way. I have compiled a few things in very short tip and tricks. So three P's uh, must be memorized in your mind. Uh, first P stands for your project oriented knowledge. Second P stands for product oriented knowledge. And third P stands for primary skills. If you gather, if you combine these three skills, you would be like a professional planning engineer. So let's start with project oriented knowledge. What uh, is project oriented knowledge? Then we'll talk about uh, product oriented knowledge and then we will talk about primary six skill. So let's start with it. Uh, when I talk about project oriented knowledge, I will give you one example that in this world, if while you are talking about mobile, road, building, hospital, MEP project, shutdown project, you name any product, you need to define time or schedule management. You have to manage your cost. You have to allocate your proper resources to execute that project in proper way. And then you need to maintain your scope that what you have to deliver all these parameters come under the umbrella of project oriented knowledge and uh, procurement. If you need some materials to utilize in that project and you need to bring that material or those items from far away areas to your site, then that would come under the umbrella of procurement management. And then there is site work. You have to maintain and maintain the records of site works. And then you have to update your site data on Primavera 6. And then you have to develop your reports and analysis. I'm not talking about right now uh, about any product. Uh, either it can be road project, it can be um, building project, railway project, uh, ship project, offshore project, onshore oil and gas pipeline. You can just imagine that uh, if you are going for any kind of project, you need all these things to define. So all these things which are commonly used in every project, it's time management, cost management, resource management, scope management, procurement management, and your report and analysis management will come under the tag of your project oriented knowledge. Now we will talk about product oriented knowledge. So this slide will explain about product oriented knowledge in very effective way. Some of you guys must be working in offshore like me. I have been serving six years in such kind of environment offshore complex. So uh, this kind of engineer must know about the standards and the sequence of work uh, you will perform in such kind of industry. Then you, if you move into the road uh, industry, road construction projects, you must know about the road standards that what are the um, uh, tests, what are the work sequence you have to follow while doing your project in implementation or execution phase. Then if you are working in plant or you are working for some pipeline project or you are working some for some uh, fabrication project or if you are working some uh, building construction project so every guy having its own career line while serving in that career line what you know about uh, the knowledge the uh, principles the standards about that product uh, those uh, standards are called product oriented knowledge Okay, so that is the difference between product oriented knowledge and project oriented knowledge. So that must be very, very clear to you guys before jumping into planning and scheduling in um, on Primavera 6. So here at the end of this course, what you will get here are a few benefits. So for fresh engineers, I will suggest that this course uh, will help them a lot to aware them that how uh, market is uh, performing the work in uh, the, under the tag of project management in this course i will talk most of the times about the real industry data okay so the next thing uh, after this course in effective way if you will follow all the assignments quiz and at the end of this course if you pass the test and uh, of course if you are following uh, if you are facing some problems some queries i will help you in uh, and provide you the solutions but if you successfully do this course i will assure you you must have experience of one and a half years because this course include a lot of real base industry data okay so 
most valuable training for engineers to earn good salary. This is for fresh engineers and what I have uh, for mid-career level engineers, uh, you guys can join multinational companies because multinational companies uh, are adopting Primavera 6 for their most of works and then advanced level course will be discussed in this course and you can easily get your work done in quick way okay and you can just manage your complex projects as well while using primavera 6 and then for the senior positions what are the benefits senior planning engineer plan shutdown managers why they should attend this course because this course because you guys know that these positions are higher level positions. These positions are relevant to the decision making authorities. Okay. So now Primavera 6 is being used in your industry. Okay. Well, either it is shutdown industry or EPC project industry. So if your lower level guys are planning your projects in Primavera 6, they are presenting their reports in Primavera 6. They are presenting their S curves, their project schedules, their different layouts in Primavera 6. So these senior level uh, people must know about Primavera 6. They must not learn how to use Primavera 6, but they must know that how you can um, uh, understand the reports of Primavera 6. They, so they have also benefit in this course because all the things industry demand, then check review analysis because they have to review the reports and then make analyze and then decision and then actually your decisions lead your company towards your targets or goals and then we have major benefits what are the major benefits white collar job because planning engineer are always working in the at good salary in the office and professional and backbone of any industry because that is the important thing because this is in professional skill and professional skill way much will lift your career point okay so what is next we are going to have in this slide in this course uh, how you guys will learn the things so i will actually make easy things for you guys so that you have not uh, have uh, face any query any problem i will discuss about the theory or industry ba based procedures and then i will talk about primavera 6 in the parallel mode so that you guys can also understand that what is the back end working behind any software command okay so after this you will be like a good planning engineer or professional planning engineer so what are the industries uh, primavera is being utilized are being used epc projects then plant shutdown projects manufacturing units and then production or operation units. EPC projects are different from plant shutdown, manufacturing and production operations, but uh, it is very important to discuss here the usage of Primavera 6 across the industry. But in this course, we will uh, focus on the engineers, plant shutdown, manufacturing and production and operation. We have an other separate course for EPC project on Primavera 6. So this course is specifically designed for plant shutdown, manufacturing and production operations. And what are the industries, uh, uh, people, they can follow this course. I will, oil refineries, petrochemicals, mining, steel production, cement plants, manufacturing, offshore, nuclear and timber mills and any other industry which is missing over here but having same kind of shutdown or maintenance procedure of scope of work. Okay, so what is plant shutdown we will start from here a plant shutdown means the closing intervention of operation to conduct scheduled or urgent maintenance as you guys know the you can feel the shutdown means to close everything okay when your plant is running it is giving the product or output at the end of your process you will get some output okay so if you will shut down your cycle, if you will shut down your factory, your mill, your plant, it will not give any output. But why you need to close or shut down that plant? Because here, why we need it? This is the opportune time to replace worn out or broken process materials and equipment at their useful end of life. Because when we install some valve, 
or some pipeline in our plant, it have some life cycle, like two years, three years, it need to get inspected on frequent and proper times. So when it will get worn out, you need to replace it. So we close the plant and then during the shutdown, we will replace or we will make maintenance for all those parts which are being inspected are recommended by our inspection team. That is why we call it shutdown. So because uh, during your process, during your plant is working, you cannot um, do some um, maintenance works which, uh, which are only possible when your plant will be shut down. That's why it's called shutdown. So what is next? Why we need it? The, another purpose to enhance lifetime because if you will uh, replace some spare part of some equipment, it will increase the life of that equipment, okay? Our performance of plant. So in other words, shutdown will enhance the life cycle of plant or the performance of plant. And um, why shutdown planning is very important. Most expensive of all types of maintenance because I have already discussed this thing that uh, when your plant is shut down, there is no output and uh, there is no profit, there is no benefit. So this is really sad situation. And in other words, it is expensive in one way high impact to plant production because it is impacting what is you what is the uh, output of your plant high cost of parts and equipment the spare parts you need to replace are really costly and uh, that's why it's expensive and having a high impact on your plant production and then primavera 6 what is primavera 6 Primavera 6 is uh, having a different variants and uh, you can go and uh, Google Oracle e-delivery and you can just sign up with your student account and you can download one latest version from Primavera 6 and uh, share email with me on WhatsApp and I will send you one link. You can download RAR or WinZip file and you can install that uh, Primavera 6 version in your system so that uh, you can work right now i'm sharing with you primavera 6 dashboard on presentation but in real time i'll share with you primavera 6 over here you can see right now uh, we are on primavera 6 dashboard you can see there are different colors there are different headings there is different uh, bars right now you must be something like it is a very difficult thing but I have compiled this course in a very easy way so that you guys can uh, grip on the logics, on the, you know, the sequence of the content in good and effective way. Okay. So I will also share with you tips and tricks along the course. And right now you are on Primavera 6 dash dashboard and we will get back to Primavera 6 dashboard later on. And right now I'm going to share with you slide. And in this slide next we have... Uh, Let's start with our dive into this course in more details. Before going into the details, I will just discuss one thing with you while doing this course. This is my equation actually. So first of all, you have to focus on the sequence of each uh, phase. You know, the sequence is very important in the management. So you have to uh, prefer the sequence of every process. Then what is the logic behind that sequence will help you one step ahead after understanding the logic we will apply that uh, logic on primavera 6 first we will understand that what project management or shutdown management our industry practices uh, dictating to us and then we will apply this to our own project and what would be the result will actually make you conceptualize uh, using primavera 6 on shutdown works and then we have to observe the things that uh, applying this thing in one way and the other way how you get the results in different way and that is the important thing you have to observe while this course i will keep my students to upgrade their observation as well because this is all about the observation what you observe you will uh, get more conceptualized in that thing okay so in this work life cycle before going into the work life cycle, I will tell you one story here. In our life, ever you uh, 
focus on this one thing that uh, everything is in a sequence. If you are going to office or coming back to office from office to home, or you are going to some friend's place, there is a sequence of things. There is one sequence. So that sequence must be followed in everything. So why not in shutdown works? So here is the sequence of shutdown works uh, regarding project oriented knowledge. And what is the sequence? First phase in shutdown works is initiate phase. While covering this course, you will also understand how we will cover this course training. So second phase is planning phase. I will also go into the details of each phase I'm describing over here on the slide. And the third phase is execution phase. And then during the execution phase, you have another fourth phase, monitor and control phase. And then you have closing phase. Now let's start a journey to go into the detail of these things. What you do in initial or initiate phase? In initiate phase, you will define objectives in measurable way or you will define that what you need to monitor while doing this shutdown. This is about key performance indicators. KPI is the dashboard of your reporting while doing your project in implementation phase. What you need to uh, look on the, you know, what are the parameters you have to focus on so in the measurable way. So this is about your senior level positions who will decide about these things, but I will prefer to discuss with you all these things because you must have a clear story in your mind before jumping into the course, okay? So initiate phase is defining your objectives of that shutdown or maintenance, okay? And then you will define that uh, in that work, you must uh, go through zero harm to shutdown work for shutdown cost to be within budget cost. And if there is overrun, it must not be more than 5% overrun. Okay. And then uh, these are the things you need to do. Uh, before, uh, you, you come to know before going into the planning phase actually because second phase is planning phase so in initiate phase you will define your shutdown date shutdown duration overall shutdown budget shutdown objectives list of equipment to be taken offline scope of work for equipment take taken offline new equipment to be installed equipment to be modified who will manage the shutdown who will execute the shutdown key dates for each shutdown phase i will also help you to go and track all these parameters as well. In coming lectures, I will discuss all that documentation from where you will extract all this data. So initiate phase, you will have all this information, but in coming lectures, you, we, you, we will talk about these parameters, okay? Because I believe that if you go with a proper sequence, you will learn more and you will get more conceptualized in that subject. And here you have a work briefing about what you have to do uh, in terms of scope of work, then preparation of plan, how you have to make your plan, implementation plan that would also call uh, the, uh, like when uh, your baseline is also called implementation plan. This we will do in Primavera 6, then your resources, your roles of people, then your procurement plan, then your site logistics, safety measures, engineering standards, all these things you need to uh, get before going into the planning phase okay and uh, we will also track all the procedures to follow all these things one by one and uh, now i'm actually giving you the details about our work life cycle this was the initial phase and now we are going into the planning phase and in planning phase there must be something like input this is very simple equation of the universe that there is input then there is output and uh, sorry for the uh, there is in uh, output uh, should be output over here i have corrected this one uh, you will get uh, you will uh, apply some inputs uh, as i have discussed the previous documentation the things i have uh, just discussed with you guys will serve as input then we will apply some for, uh, tools and techniques the market based uh, practices and then we will get the outputs the kpis okay and that is the procedure i'm going to apply in planning phase and in planning phase what you are going to do you are going to do scope management and then you are going to learn about uh, how to do your scheduling or your time estimation 
after that you will be in the position of resource management and uh, once resource management is done you will get your cost estimation and then procurement management and uh, risk management as well everything you have to do in planning phase all these things you have to do and then you have to integrate all these things i'll just make you understand that one as well like your scope management management will be linked with your time management because you will describe i will go and uh, into the details when we will talk about scope management that what is scope management and we will go and compile our complete scope on primavera 6 and and on excel from excel to primavera 6 and then uh, you will define about your time required to complete that scope of work. You will apply your resources on those uh, those activities and uh, from those man hours you will apply load the cost and you will get cost estimation procurement and the risk management everything will be linked with each other and that is called integration management and uh, how it will go your planning phase execution monitor control and closeout phase and in planning phase i have done scope management time management cost management resource management procurement manage management and risk management but here you will understand that at the end of planning phase when you will do all these things you will integrate all these knowledge areas what are the outcomes so you will get project schedule which will provide you that which activity on which date will be started and uh, your s curves are cash flows the utilization of your resources in the shape of a curve which is called s curve you will get all the s curves regarding uh, your uh, manpower machinery material or with the uh, impact of cost okay and then you will get your resource histograms your engineering document register and procurement register as well these all are the outputs and here one slide will explain this idea in good way you have done scope schedule cost resources risk procurement and then what is the output project schedule critical path in which this is a very very important thing and then resource histograms your s curves cash flows man hour based s curves and then stacked histograms and then you have progress update methods that how you guys have to monitor your shutdown work or maintenance work okay so this is the basic thing i'm i just want you guys to grab the idea but believe me if you will go along with me during this course i will assure you that you will grip this planning and scheduling technique in primary six in more effective way as per the industry practices okay and uh, I will define this planning in two categories. Uh, there is one vertical planning and there is one horizontal planning. These are my terminologies which will help you to understand planning and scheduling on shutdown projects in more accurate and in more easy way. This will provide you a easy approach. Okay. So what are the vertical and horizontal approaches? In vertical planning, you will uh, call it also top to down or top to bottom and in this planning you will break your project into different phases actually in different stages and um, what are the stages uh, your plan would be called sometime level one as per the condition of your work level two level three it depends at which situation at which stage you are because at the initial phase you will present your project summary as level one at the bidding uh, you know you will present your project with level two and at the execution level you will provide your plan with level three and what are the differences between these levels i will also uh, talk about these parameters as well but right now you will see that as we are going from top to bottom in breaking our project from higher level to lower level it will called as vertical planning but it's not like official i'm just helping you to memorize these things because this is actually something uh, people uh, afraid of are uh, taking as uh, toughest thing but these uh, techniques will help you to make your work more easy okay and simpler one and then there is a horizontal planning in horizontal planning at every level you have to define your time you have to define your cost you have to define your resources you have to define your risk so this is horizontal planning if i'm talking about level one and at level one what kind of works i have to do 
uh, then horizontal planning is explaining about the time of that level about the cost of the uh, about the, that level and the resources required at that level and risk at that level okay so and uh, vertical planning horizontal planning and then you have this project life cycle in planning right now we are at planning phase and we are going down and at the same time we are dividing our work and as per our breakdown we are providing the information about time management about cost management about resource management at that certain level in planning phase okay and then we have execution phase in execution phase you will prepare look ahead plans once your project is done you have done with your project schedule you have done with your s curves you have done with your histograms you have done your uh, tracking method uh, identification now you are in the implementation phase you have to carry out that plan so on the weekly or daily basis you have to prepare your primary six based look at plans you have to hand over these look ahead plans to your implementation team and then you will get back that data like uh, there must be some frequency that on daily basis site engineers are shutdown engineers are supervisor are updating primary six or planning engineer with the work done so you have to update your primary six reporting on the basis of your site work so these are the responsibilities in execution execution phase you have to do and during execution phase there is one more phase which is monitor and control phase by the name of monitor and control it's same like you and me guys have been uh, appearing in the exams of um, our school days and there was one teacher uh, just uh, wandering around in the lines just to monitor the students so simple way you have to uh, monitor your work which is being done which is being carried on your site and control when you will monitor then you will make some analysis reports that what you know basis on your planning phase and execution phase what you have thought and what you are going to get um, and on the basis of your defined kpis you have to develop your analysis as curves you have to develop your histograms uh, comparing with your planning phase and execution phase and that is uh, you have to carry out on your uh, monitor and control phase and then we have closeout phase in closeout phase you have to hand over your plant whatever you have been given for the shutdown purposes you have to hand over the, the uh, all that thing all those areas to your operation department and that is end up with your shutdown so that was that was a, a quite uh, you know short journey just to give you an idea about uh, your project oriented uh, you know uh, journey from initiate phase to your closing phase just an uh, overall idea that what you are going to study about so in this uh, after this now we are going to jump into primavera 6 because uh, my methodology will go parallel will go head to head that i will discuss about some theory then i will take that uh, you on primavera 6 because i will uh, continuously will changing the taste of your learning because uh, it's not like that uh, i will just stick with your with the theory and uh, not with software so i will go into the parallel mode so right now i'm going to jump into primavera 6 i'm going to share with you primavera 6 and uh, on primavera 6 we are going to develop our eps first we are going to discuss uh, what is eps then we are going to develop obs then we are going to learn that how to develop a new project file in primavera 6 and then we are going to execute the basic settings okay so i'm going to share with you whiteboard and uh, here i am going to tell you that what is eps if i write here eps means enterprise project structure enterprise project structure so what does mean by enterprise any company any organization which is uh, being uh, uh, which is working in your country as per the rule or law of your country will be called as enterprise and uh, project structure means this company is serving in different departments and it has made different departments like if you are studying some engineering university you must aware of this thing that your university having civil engineering department mechanical engineering department civil engineering electrical engineering department so all these departments are educational structure of your uh, uh, university so same way if uh, 
your company having procurement are then water department oil and gas department then civil department so all these departments are the eps of of that organization so eps are departments uh, having same meaning but eps is project management oriented professional terminology having the same meaning of department so now we are going into the primavera and we are going to establish different eps as per our organization it is very very simple uh, thing so before going to execute anything on primavera 6 i am going to tell you the uh, familiarity with primavera 6 i'll share with you primavera 6 dashboard right now we are on primavera 6 dashboard you can see that on primavera 6 there is on your right side there are uh, some bars with timeline and uh, primavera 6 is not like that you can only work on single project you can develop multiple projects multiple departments and then you can integrate all those departments all those projects with each other but in this course we will carry out uh, our single project so you can in understand things in simpler way so right now we are on this dashboard here you have bar chart area and here you have activity table so uh, what i will do doing uh, for uh, while following some logic i will uh, write that uh, process or logic flow diagram on uh, whiteboard and then i will come back to primavera 6 dashboard and i will follow that log logic to get required uh, output so here you can see that you can see some uh, uh, icons or images or some uh, commands over here file edit view project enterprise tools admin help at the initial level i will help you to learn primavera 6 by using these commands whereas you can find the same options in these areas but it will take time to learn that which icon is uh, uh, standing for which option okay so right now i'm just going to click on any given command like view you will be given uh, every time you will click on any uh, this command you will be given drop down window and from this drop down window we have to select some uh, you know predefined option to get required result so i'm sh going to share with you whiteboard and uh, how to customize our eps i'm going to tell you about this thing you also make your notes while going along with me during this course how to make because how to make eps customization because this is very important thing to pen down or you make your own notes because every time when you are going to uh, consume your time to watch this video first time it's important to watch all the video thoroughly and uh, along uh, watching uh, as you are watching this video you have to pen down all these important process flow diagrams so that when you practice it is easy for you to just see on the note and follow that logic one two three three times you will do and uh, for the fourth time it will be like uh, on your fingertips this is my self experience so how to make eps customization you have to click on enterprises in toolbar menu enterprise you will be given a drop down window in that window you will be given eps in full uh, form enterprise project structure you have to click on that button you will be given a drop uh, new window in that window you have to just click on the add button and just add uh, the different departments as per your organization uh, structure okay so i'm going to follow uh, the same logic the same process flow diagram and going to share with you primavera dashboard and here there is already pre-existing project but don't worry we are going to uh, develop our own project so here i'm going to just click on this enterprise just make me sure that one thing and uh, okay here enterprise and click on this button and you will be given this drop down window in this window you can find here eps in full form eps enterprise project structure click on this button and you will be given this window in this window you can see that there are already some departments are existing so there are few departments so what you can do this is the add button 
sometime you will get this button uh, only with plus sign plus symbol and sometimes it is also given with add text okay so every time you are going to click your company and going to click on this add button one new line is going to add up over in this area you have to observe what are the information you have to provide in primavera 6 as per the description of this column here ep as ID, every department uh, having some ID, the name, then responsible manager. Okay, same way you can uh, add multiple 10, 12, 20 uh, uh, departments. Okay, if you want to add some department which is under this department, so what you need to do, you have to click on this, select this option, click on this add button, and then you have to make this new uh, new EPS for. Uh, subordinate to the new uh, EPS3. So you have to make uh, some movement from this position to uh, this position. So just move or uh, shift your this new EPS4 with the help of this. You know, you can see that now it is subordinate. So like this, you can make your uh, sub departments and your overall department hierarchy as well. So this is very simple approach you can utilize on your Primavera 6 to develop your EPS. So the simple logic I will discuss with you one time and you have to follow the same logic every time to develop your hundred and thousand departments which are I'm sure not required at this level. Okay, because no company having hundred departments except a few companies and here you can see that uh, display EPS this arrow will bring a few more options for you guys. I'll click on this button and you will give an chart view. If I'll click on this chart view, you will see that you can see your EPS with your hierarchy. Okay. And uh, if I'll click again on this button table view and it will give you such kind of view. And again, I'll go and uh, if I need to add some columns, uh, you can just go and click, click on this eps only your two columns left behind okay that was there was an extra column in which you can show your responsible manager as well okay so this is simple customization you can make on primavera 6 while doing your there is one find button in which you can quickly if you have a lot of more than 50 departments and you have no time to go and search and in that case you can write that already added a department over here by name and you can search quickly let's say i want see energy and uh, you can see this time it's now working find what okay let's we will discuss this one later on because this is not that much important because we know that every time we have limited uh, departments and uh, let's close it and that's all about eps customization now we are going to discuss about another parameter which is obs what is obs organizational breakdown structure so i'm going to share with you whiteboard and going to clear all the window and uh, here we have one minute this one so what is obs organizational break down structure you guys must have uh, heard about the thing like organogram like this way i will share with you if your plant shut down manager then you have under this plant short shut down manager different plant engineer then here plant engineer different your you know plant team and uh, here you will just link with this one like this like this i should make like this before and move this one from here to here and here also one arrow you must have some 
uh, organogram in your company like this uh, that under your plant shutdown manager you have plant engineer then further you have under uh, plant engineer uh, supervisor under these plant engineers then you have uh, further on more uh, manpower in your project management team or your plant uh, team okay so this is called your organizational breakdown structure or obs so how to incorporate this information in primavera 6 so how to follow the uh, logic flow diagram i'll make you understand again you have to click on enterprise and this time you will get a drop down window and you have to click on obs given over there and once you'll click on obs you will be given a window in that window again you have to follow the same logic add and you have to add all the things as per your requirement so i'm going to share with you primavera dashboard and uh, on primavera 6 dashboard i'm going to just share with you the process flow logic to uh, i'll click on enterprise and uh, enterprise and here you will get you have you need to extend this window and you will be given here obs click on this button and uh, then you will be given this obs like this there is already added some positions and all that so what you need to do you have to add all your project management or your plant management team over here with uh, you know the logics that uh, with the position that who is responsible yeah or who is supposed to reporting to which position so that will make a sequential hierarchy over here so i'm going to just click on this button and uh, just take uh, okay so here you can uh, click on this area and uh, further i will give you one uh, tip over here that uh, if your hierarchy look like this it's not giving you any logic that sto manager is subordinate of your enterprise or maintenance is subordinate of which uh, position so what you need to do you have to just click on this button and uh, just follow filter by option and uh, by filter ob uh, by option you have to just go for all obs elements then it will start giving you this sequence in which you have clear idea and complete picture of your organogram or your organizational breakdown structure it, here you have also follow the same logic you have to just i'll just delete these positions and one by one and even i will delete this one as well and uh, again i will delete this one as well now you have simple this one and you have to click on this add button and uh, just click here shut down manager you can also add the name and uh, in brackets you can go for the name or uh, you can go for uh, you know uh, position in brackets as well shut down manager and then you click on this add button here you can click add man uh, plant manager all the people who are working in your that shutdown you have to add in this not your welders and uh, your fabrication guys okay not that crew only your uh, you know higher level uh, hierarchy of your organization again plant manager plant manager you guys must under uh, thinking that these are identical things and a primavera also also uh, also have picked that thing that it must be unique so it will provide one see so you can write here plant manager area a and this one area b okay under this plant manager this is there is one supervisor but this is at the same level so at the you, because but you want i will just put here supervisor and uh, now i want this supervisor under this plant manager b so what i need to do uh, and also plant manager b should be under shutdown manager so first i will shift this plant manager under this shutdown manager i will use this arrow and then supervisor see like this i'll delete and again i will just generate one add 
and now I will make because you cannot move one position two times. Okay, so here is supervisor. And same way you can add uh, all your positions under this uh, engineer plant manager A. Okay, and then you can just make your view change. So how chart view, it will give you picture like this, see? So this is your organogram in Primavera 6. When you do all these two things, now we are going to jump into our uh, developing new project file in Primavera 6. That is the very exciting thing. Now we are going to our project manager give us grain signal that you have to start your planning and scheduling on Primavera 6. Right now I'm just giving you the uh, instructions that you, how you have to start with Primavera 6 while doing this course in the first lecture because I don't want you just wait for five lectures and then you jump into Primavera 6. That's not a good idea. I think that I should take you along with me on Primavera 6 as well as on your theory journey as well. That what is maintenance, how you will perform all these things. Okay. So actually these are basic things. So I think at this level, you should also uh, do all these things on Primavera 6. And uh, before that, you must install Primavera 6 in your system. If you have not yet installed Primavera 6 in your system, just uh, let me know. I will provide you setup. I will help you to install that setup in your system and start working on Primavera 6 as well as maintain your copy or maintain your notes as well. Okay, that is most important thing at the end of this course, you have to go through one test. So here I'm going to let you know that how to develop new project file in Primavera 6. So for that, you have to follow this process flow diagram. First of all, you have to click on Primavera 6 toolbar menu command file. Once you'll click on this button, you will be given a new drop down window in that window you have to click on new because we are going to make new project files so that makes sense and this time you have to click on new and you will be given a window in this window you have to provide primavera 6 certain information before giving this information to primavera 6 i will take you back into your school days that uh, when i was in school or college i have been buying one register for the homework of physics on our chemistry or any other subject on the front page i have been providing information about my roll number name school name department so here the same thing you have to provide to primavera 6 you have to provide the department details uh, that which department this project file is going to belong your project name your project uh, dates your project manager name your project uh, rate type rate type is just a formality i will go into the details later on cost management because at this level we have not yet uh, studied about all those things so we will treat it as, uh, as a formality and all the other information we will provide to the primavera 6 and we will get our new project file because you are all, uh, already know that in primavera 6 you can develop multiple projects multiple departments so that you can control your project portfolio your company portfolio in single software okay so what i'm going to do i'm just highlighting this cursor so that you can follow this cursor easily and here i am on file area and here i will click drop down window is here i will click on new and here is the window in this window first thing i have to provide primavera 6 about the department um, that which department it belongs to okay so in this area you have to click and whatever you have customized in your primavera 6 all those departments will be given to you let's say i'm going to click on energy click on this button and energy department has been assigned to this project click on next and your project id because in initiate phase at the start of this project uh, uh, this lecture i have mentioned few things your project name because through your tender and bidding or through some uh, documents you come to know that what is the idea of this project what is the name of this plant what they are uh, calling it so you can just provide that a project id and project name let's say i'm going to write here sto just a general name dash 2020 and then i will provide here the complete name just a general name shut down 
turn around and outage okay 2020 just i'm uh, uh, giving a general name over here and then click on the button next and here you have to provide information to primavera 6 that when your this shutdown is going to start so here you can provide those all informations and uh, i will provide here the start dates let's say i'll click on this button and you will observe that a calendar window pop up in front of you and uh, you can see this is just like another calendar at your home and uh, there is months year there is pattern of week and you can navigate ahead backward and uh, you can just put your you know the name of uh, you know date start date of your project because uh, in the initial phase you you must know that uh, through your information of documentation you you come to know that uh, on which date your shutdown is going to start so accordingly you have to go on primavera 6 and in easy approach let's say your project uh, shutdown is going to start on 11th of june just click on this button select just provide in this information to primavera 6 what is finish date or uh, i can say that uh, is it okay to provide finish date at this level to primavera 6 i think uh, if i will provide finish date to primavera 6 uh, it will put some constraint on my plan so i don't want that thing because i just want to uh, recalculate all the things uh, with the given conditions by my project manager then i will decide and make the deadline for my project so that is the easy way just start uh, with your uh, project file with project start date don't provide any finish date at the end of everything like scope management resource cost and each and everything well when you will compile you will integrate you will be given a critical path then it will be automatically logged down with some finish date if, if you want to recalculate then it is easy for you to recalculate you if you want to uh, change your duration uh, because you know in your industry everything is going to change every day so i just want that option alive in my scenario so i'll just click on next and here you have to provide uh, one information to primavera 6 that who is the responsible for this um, project just click on this button and you will be given here information and just click shutdown manager and you will provide here that position next rate type as i have already discussed that this is not that much important at this level but uh, i will go into the details that uh, there are few terminologies given over here as per your contract and documentation what is being used in your uh, plant you can go for that but in my case i will follow standard rate and go for the next and then congratulations you have made a new project file just hit on the finish button and it's done now where is the new project file i'm still on the same old project so what i need to do i have to follow one more process flow diagram so what is that process flow diagram again i have to click on the toolbar menu command file and this time don't go into the new option this time you have to go in the into the open option once you will click on open option it will bring for you eps window what you have already customized it will bring that window and uh, uh, you have to go into your concerning department and then you have to select you must know that what is your the name of your project and then open your project this step will help you to find and open your new project file in primavera 6 so i'm going to share with you primavera dashboard to follow the simple logic and uh, so how to get our new project file here i am i'll just highlight this cursor so that you can follow it easily and here we are file click on this button and you will be given at this drop down window in this window now you have to go for open you can also uh, choose these short key uh, shortcuts on your keyboard and you can execute the same step it's not like that every time you have to go like this but it depends how much you are practicing on primavera 6 okay so click on this open button and uh, you will be given this drop uh, this window and in this window this is eps window okay if i'll minimize every department it will look like this when you are defining your eps to your project am i right i hope i am and here you will maximize your energy department and here you can find your project sto2020 just select your project and click on this open button and you will land on your new project file and this project file has also yet to 
populated with different scope of works with different resources with different cost loading parameters and still we have to start our this journey into the details but as per our first lecture we are bound to discuss only these parameters we will structure our project as per the project management or plant shutdown management standards but before that we have to get an idea get a concept that how maintenance go along with planning phase okay so we have to go a lot of things in detail so so see you in the next lecture thank you very much if you face any problem any query you can just whatsapp me and get feedback on your concerning problem thank you very much